Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. In the beginning, I would like to thank the organizing committee for giving me the opportunity to be here uh, among my colleagues in Kuwait. And uh, also, special thanks goes to Dr. Iman Shemri and Dr. Farid al for uh, accommodating my nagging request. And uh, finally, I would like to congratulate you for uh, the best arrangement of this meeting, which you usually didn't see uh, in any other places except in Kuwait. As you can see uh, from the title, I'll be talking about ideal cyclotron infrastructure of cyclotron facility. Well, there is, it's a very difficult question, what is ideal cyclotron? As I listed here, it's I put 26 plus. It's not 26 MeV plus. It is, I've been working in the field of cyclotron and radio pharmaceutical for almost 26 years, and uh, I really have no answer for what is the ideal cyclotron. So shall we stop here uh, in, at this slide and we finish the presentation? Of course not. Uh, why? I don't know. Because I have to ask myself, is there any ideal cyclotron to start with? Uh, if somebody wants to go and uh, want to buy a property and he doesn't know whether he's going to live there or rent it or invest it or do, do whatever it is, he will go to the real estate agent and will ask him, I need uh, a property. He will just simply tell him location, location, and finally location. And if you ask me what is the ideal cyclotron, I'm not a real estate agent, but I will tell you needs, needs, and finally needs. So, what are the needs? You have to have uh, uh, the needs, the present needs, and the future needs. And your needs should not be really based on wishful thinking. You have to balance your needs uh, with the funds you that you have, the space allocated for your cyclotron project, and the human resources available to operate your system. So, the ideal cyclotron is the cyclotron that meets your requirements and needs. Uh, to tell you whether it's uh, 10 MeV or 30 MeV, it's really based on your needs. And as we said, it's the current and the future needs. <clears throat> Cyclo cyclotron versus cyclone, I always, uh, because lots of people uh, I met, they kind of ignorant what are, this, what are cyclotron. I told them cyclotron is a machine that saves mankind, whereas cyclone is uh, something that destroy mankind. So there is a clear uh, cut between these two things. So what are cyclotron? Cyclotron is a type of accelerator that is capable of accelerating charged particles. Decharged particles can be proton or deutron, helium particles, or finally uh, alpha particles. And this is a picture of our cyclotron, 20, 27 MeV cyclotron, installed at King Faisal uh, Hospital in Riyadh in 1979. Uh, the first cyclotron was designed by uh, Nobel laureate Ernest and Young from University of California, uh, Berkeley, in 1932. As you can see here, this is the first cyclotron. It is 1 MeV with 11 inch, and this is 3.6 MeV, and finally they manufactured the 8 MeV. And this was back on the 1930s. So how do we classify cyclotrons? We can, or I can classify cyclotrons in four different levels. We have level one cyclotron. Usually it's a single particle and accelerate proton only. Usually it's less than 10 MeV and it is used for FDG or oxygen 15 uh, based on a single dose production. Level two is a single or dual particle like proton or deutron. Usually it's less than 20 MeV and mostly uh, produce uh, PET radioisotopes and uh, it is located usually in hospital and clinical setup. Level 3 cyclotron is a single or multiple particles acceleration and it's usually less than 50 MeV. It can, along with the PET radioisotopes or PET radiopharmaceuticals, it can produce SPECT isotopes and usually uh, this is located in industry, university, national institute. Finally, level 4 cyclotron is usually proton only, and it's always greater than 70 MeV up to 500 MeV, 
and it is for a large scale production and it's usually located uh, in university and national institute and uh, recently it's been used for proton therapy. So proton energy versus the isotope produced. Uh, level 1 cyclotron, which is less than 10 MeV, it can produce carbon-11, F18, and oxygen-15. The level 2 can produce uh, most of the PET radioisotopes, in addition to the technetium-99N. Level 3, it's, which is less than 50 MeV, can produce almost everything, such as ID-123, uh, thallium, gallium, etc., etc. Level 4 cyclotron, which is usually greater than 70 MeV, it produces everything, and in addition to that, it can produce gallium-68 uh, gallium generator based from the G germanium-68. Also, it can produce uh, rubidium-82 generators. Uh, level 4 cyclotron is the one used for proton therapy. Uh, this is uh, a typical cyclotron produced by IBA. It's 230 MeV and it accelerates a proton, and uh, it's been used for quite some times for proton therapy. So if we talk in details about uh, cyclotrons, the 10 MeV cyclotrons, uh, they have, uh, it's produced now, nowadays produced by IBA, it's uh, mainly for the production of oxygen-15, and they call it oxygen-15 generator. It's a 3.5 MeV positive ion cyclotron, and this is a typical picture of it. Uh, there is also another one called dose in demand uh, cyclotron. It's produced by ABT, uh, American company. Energy is 7.5 MeV, positive ion, and it has three internal uh, target. And it can produce uh, one millicurie per minute, and maximum they all they, uh, produce 25 millicurie. And it's barely enough for single dose because the beam is uh, very low. It's less than 5 microamp. Uh, this is the microfluid uh, system that is associated with the dose in demand cyclotron. Uh, I think it's not been approved by FDA uh, as uh, a way of producing uh, FDG, although it is practical for a small setup that uh, requires a small uh, or a single dose of FDG, but I, th I think it has uh, disadvantages. The less than 20 MeV cyclotrons, it's been offered by varieties of company. It's uh, manufactured by GE, IBA, Simmons, ACSI, BEST cyclotrons, Kerams, and Sumitomo. And these are the pictures, and they can be uh, standalone cyclotron or they can be self-shielded uh, cyclotron. Uh, this is the setup or, or the plan for uh, cyclotron less than 20 MeV. If they are self-shielded, you don't have to have uh, a thick wall. If they are not self-shielded, you will have to have uh, something like 2 point something uh, meter of uh, concrete to shield the radiation. And these are the production facility like uh, radio pharmacy along with the quality control. <coughs> Level 3 cyclotron, which is less than 50 MeV, it's produced by a variety of companies, and they have fixed energies. They are 24, 25, 30, 35 MeV, and again, it's produced by a variety of companies. One of them is IBA, ACS, and BIS cyclotron. Here, the, the plan is really big. You can see the cyclotron here. It has different beam lines. It can be used simultaneously for the production of isotope in this uh, the target vault and in this tar target vault. And the facility is a bit huge. The costs associated with these cyclotron are also uh, huge. The level 4 cyclotron, which is greater than 70 MeV cyclotron, they are limited. And uh, as you can see, it's manufactured by IBA. And this is a cyclotron in South Africa, which is 200 MeV. And this is a 500 MeV cyclotron at Triumph. You can see the people standing here uh, on top of, of the Ds of the cyclotron. The facility is really huge, and the cost is really, really huge. And uh, it is only uh, placed in a uh, few places around the world. So what are the advances in cyclotron? Now people are working towards the superconducting cyclotron. Why they are working towards that? Because they try to save the power consumption and make the cyclotron small, and the weight is also low, and also to reduce the operation cost of the cyclotron. 
If we look at the distribution of cyclotrons in the GCC countries, you can see that we have uh, nine cyclotrons less than 20, 20 MeV, and we have two cyclotrons less than uh, 50 MeV, and these two cyclotrons are uh, in Saudi Arabia. In the future, there will be one cyclotron less than 10 MeV, and four cyclotrons less than 20, and four, another four cyclotron less than 50 MeV, and two of them are uh, 24 MeV by ACSI in Saudi Arabia. Number of cyclotrons worldwide, and worldwide there is almost 800 cyclotron, and you can see the distribution, 20, the 600 cyclotron is less than uh, 20 MeV, and other cyclotrons are ranging between uh, 50, 70, and 10 cyclotrons. Uh, the percentage of the usage of the cyclotron, 90% is used for uh, F18 uh, production, mainly uh, FDG and uh, uh, sodium fluoride. Other uh, are you know, used for uh, thallium, gallium, and other radiotracers. If we compare ourselves in the GCC with the rest of the world, you can see we have almost a similar trend. Most of the cyclotrons are less than 20 MeV, and a few cyclotrons are less than 50 MeV. Nowadays, there are cyclotron 20 and plus, and one of them is the 24 MeV by ACSI, and uh, they have really made a big marketing that it can produce technetium 99M. Uh, as part of the International Atomic Energy uh, committee for one project, and I've been working in this project as a chief investigator entitled as accelerator-based alternative to NEN uh, high enrich uranium production of MOLLE 99 technetium generator. We try to investigate, you know, uh, the, the production of technetium uh, using cyclotron and try to put the optimum condition for the production. As you can see here from the cross-section reaction, this is the technetium uh, cross-section reaction uh, from using cyclotron uh, and also using enriched moly 100. Uh, people at uh, ACSI have said that 24 MeV is uh, the best energy to produce uh, uh, technetium 99M. Sometimes I differ with them in this case because 24 MeV, yes, you are producing lots of activity of uh, technetium 99M, but also you have some other impurities which are the main problem for the regulatory body to approve this, these things. But I think uh, ACSI have been uh, getting uh, generous fund from the Canadian government uh, since they are going to close their Chakra River reactor uh, in 2016, and they have no other choice except producing technetium using cyclotron. So they were giving uh, $25 million for the development, and they have developed the procedure, and they have a complete system for the production of technetium 99M from cyclotron. And they are now in the clinical trial phase. But is this going to be approved the, uh, in the rest of the countries? Uh, I don't know because I think lots of politics will uh, fit in. Why I say that? Because now there is an American company called North Star. They have the intellectual property uh, license to produce net technetium, but to produce MOLLE, which is the parent of technetium, using linear accelerator 20, 35 MeV. And they have set up more than uh, 10 uh, linear accelerator. And they were claiming that this would cover almost 50% of the demand of technetium in the United States. So this procedure is probably or likely to be approved by the regulatory bodies such as FDA because here you are producing MOLLE, you are not producing the technetium. So the source of MOLLE, instead of getting it from the reactors, now we are getting it from the cyclotrons, which make it easier to be approved. IBA have also proposed something. They, have, they, they propose the production of 150 and 350 MeV cyclotron with 1.5 microam uh, current to produce uh, moly uh, from uh, enriched uranium using neutron. But uh, the cost is very, very high, and I don't think it's feasible these days. So if you are buying cyclotron, you have to have essential characteristic in your cyclotron. It has to be negative particle acceleration, multiple exit ports, and multiple extraction system. 
Simultaneous dual target irradiation, high proton beam current, because the more the beam current is, the more the yield you will get. Minimum personal exposure during maintenance, and you have to stress also on the factory level training for your staff. And finally, the warranty and the service, because warranty and service is a really a vague issue. Sometimes they tell you spare parts is not included, uh, or the consumable are not part of the spare parts. So you have to be very careful on these things. So how do we produce radioisotope from cyclotron? We need target or targetry system. Targetry system, when you hit the target with a proton, uh, you produce radioisotopes. So you have to have a good uh, target system, and the target system, they can be solid uh, for production of variety of radioisotopes, and you have to have uh, uh, electroplating system to electroplate enriched material on the, on the solid target system. Or they can be liquids, such as the production of fluorine 18 from enriched water, or gases where you produce uh, like carbon 11 and uh, the ultra pure iodine 123 from a xenon 124. So essential characteristic of target, need to produce isotope reliably to meet the clinical and research need, needs to keep low cost low, need to have specific activity for binding studies, need to produce large quantity to meet the current and future demand, simple targets which do not degrade in performance, recycled enriched material because enriched material is so expensive you have to have the capability of uh, recycling this enriched material and using it. Uh, minimize the amount of friend radioactive isotope in the final product and target which would stand high power current to produce more uh, radioisotopes. These are some of the solid target that we have developed at our facility and uh, we have developed it for the production of ID-123 and ID-124, the copper 64 and the zirconium 89 and finally the technetium 99. All these radioisotopes are produced in our facility and we are using it only for research purposes. So for the separation, after the irradiation, you have to separate the radioactive from non-radioactive. So you need to have the hot cells, and inside the hot cells, you can use the traditional way of the separation, or you can use automated system, which is, uh, uh, more, uh, which is reliable, but uh, I prefer the traditional way where you have better control on it. Also with your target, you, with your cyclotron, you have to have a fluorine target that is of a good body, either neopium or tantalum, and in ca it should produce more than two curies per hour. And this is for F18, uh, F2 for uh, the uh, DOPA production. Uh, the same thing with the carbon 11 uh, specification on the target body and the production rate. Again, with the ammonia, it is similar things, oxygen 15. So we can really uh, see a clear advantage of using cyclotron for the production of isotopes. It's suitable half-life, high specific activity, gamma energy, no particulate emission, low impurities, and environment friendly instead of going through the environment non-friendly, which is the reactor. Again, in your facility, when you are establishing cyclotron, you would have to have a radio pharmacy, and radio pharmacy is basically a clean room, and you have to have all the associated equipment with it, like laminar flow cabinet, which is used for the formulation and the dispensing of the final product. Also, in uh, the facilities, you would need a synthesizer for the production of FDG uh, or oxygen-15 or other radio tracers. And this is the old way of producing FDG, which is a semi-automated uh, that takes almost 90 minutes. And now we, they come up with a new synthesizer that can produce FDG in 25 minutes with a high radiochemical purity and high radiochemical yield. The same thing with uh, FDOPA. Uh, although FDOPA, they are using the old method, which is approved by FDA, but the new method, they are using the direct radio labeling with high specific activity because it's non-carrier added in the FDOPA. Again, with the C11, you have the, the equipment for the production of the precursors like methyl iodide or methyl triflate, and also another reaction to produce uh, methionine or acetate or rocalprides, etc. Oxygen-15 is a straightforward, and uh, you, can, you can produce it easily without, you know, having any hassles. So all these synthesizers, you have to place it on what's so-called uh, hot uh, or chemistry, uh, hot box or chemistry uh, shielding uh, boxes here. And the environment uh, should be uh, of a class B at least, surrounded by a class C. 
the advances in synthesizer nowadays, they, uh, they come up with what's so-called all-in-one that you can produce FDG using one synthesizer and you can produce also other radio tracer. Also, you produce gallium-68 radio tracer. You can also extend it to the therapeutic radio uh, pharmaceuticals such as uterium or lithium-177. And this one, which is uh, from a company called Aura, is the only FDA-approved synthesizer for the production of Amivid. And Amivid is an approved radiopharmaceutical for the management of Alzheimer's disease. Dispenser, if you want to send uh, samples to customers, you would have to have a dispenser, and this dispenser should be shielded in, in, and placed in a clean room to dispense the final product. Again, the quality control equipment, you have to have a well-established quality control, and it depends on your, uh, the size of your uh, center. You'll have to have analytical equipment, radionuclear analysis equipment, radiochemical analysis equipment, biological test equipment, and stability and validation equipment. And these are very small or, or minor equipments. I'm not going to go through all these, but we'll just you know, show it to you. And the advances in the quality control uh, equipment, as what you have seen in the quality control lab, lots of equipments now, it was, everything was condensed to this machine. Where you can do where you can do all uh, in one quality control, it's an automated to do all the QC operation, reduce the radiation exposure because you're using a very small amount like 60 microliter, accelerate analysis and throughput 15 minutes and uh, the uh, the the analysis and the certificate is ready. Liberate your uh, workbench because it has a small print review and release remotely, and you have electronic signature, and finally, it is cheaper than having all these equipment all together. Of course, for shipping, you will have to have uh, enough shielding to ship uh, radio pharmaceuticals uh, outside your institute, and you have to coordinate to, or to conform to the IATA regulation. You will have to have also radiation sh safety issues, such as monitoring system for the department, and monitoring equipment for the personnel and radiation protection issues like providing uh, uh, shielding for your uh, operators to reduce uh, the, the, the shielding or to reduce the exposure. Uh, important things in establishing or having a cyclotron and radio pharmaceutical center, you have to have your own human capaci capacity resources development. And I have said it here three times because having uh, your own people, you are sure that have, of having sustainable production of radio pharmaceuticals. Yeah. Uh, radio pharmaceuticals team, it's uh, comprised of engineers, radio chemists, radio pharmacists, and physicists. It's very difficult to hire those guys. And if you want to have uh, train, well-trained guys, their salary are not that uh, cheap. So you have to give them something called like a rare specialty allowance or whatever to retain your staff. Uh, for the staff, they have to be a sufficient staff in your facility and a qualified person to carry out all the tasks and individual responsibility should be clearly distributed uh, among the staff and you have to have it in your organization chart. You have to separate, uh, have separate people for the preparation and separate people for the quality control and the quality assurance. And also this is related to how big is your system. But the person who produces radio pharmaceuticals should not do the quality control for it. And you have to have a continual uh, training for your staff uh, like occasionally, and it should be documented as part of the good manufacturing practice. Again, you will have to meet the regulation requirements. Because radio pharmaceuticals are radioactive drug, therefore legislation considering radiation protection and pharmaceuticals both will apply. Uh, you have to make sure that whether you are a manufacturing or a compounding facility, manufacturing facility, usually you have to get your permission from the authorities such as FDA, whereas if you are compounding and you are intending to sell your, uh, not to sell your product, you just need it from your uh, IRB uh, at your institute. And uh, to start or to establish a pet center or a cyclotron and radio pharmaceutical department, it's very important that to consult with the regulatory body from the first phases, even before you know, having the blueprint for the department. And they have to look at it uh, with the blueprint during the building and after the building. So you make sure that the, by doing that, you will not uh, delay your project. 
And my suggestion for people who does not have really uh, much of experience uh, in, in uh, this field is to have a turnkey project because we have a problem at King Faisal, like we have a guy who does the building and guy who does the the equipment, and we always, uh, you know, find ourselves uh, odd between those two guys. Everybody is uh, shifting the responsibility to the other. So if you have uh, you have it in one person, he will have the full responsibility for that, and he should meet the deadline that you have. There are important considerations in developing countries because cyclotron is very expensive technology, whether it's a cyclotron or the scanner or the supporting structure, and limitation in trained professional, limitation in technology and regulatory instruction. There are some potential uh, solutions to establish national centers, like one cyc cyclotron that serve other pet centers, develop human resources uh, capacity, uh, transfer technology from developed countries, or utilize the regional uh, sources. Finally, I would like to finish my presentation with uh, not the sandstorm, but at this time it's the snowstorm that hit the northwest part of Saudi Arabia. And uh, by this, we, they were, the guys will be able to uh, build their, uh, not the snowman, it's the snow camel. Thank you very much for your careful listening.